AT15 Drunk Frog Plans and Kit Set. What is it? What do you get? What did I change from that prototype that you see there to the production variant, which you see there on the plan set? So let's dive in here. What you get with the kit, you're going to get 20 poly sprocket teeth for your sprocket wheel there. Field replaceable, elastomeric, so that way you don't have to worry about ice and snow sticking and it keeps wear off your steel cross member. Then you're going to get four industrial well nuts here. Square projection, four projection. They use this shit in heavy equipment all the time, works out pretty good. Then you're going to get over 120 pages of technical drawings, cut lists, bill of materials, and then not to mention all the DXF and DWG CNC files for your steel cutter. So that way they can cut it out and then press break the appropriate panels and sheeting for the body and also the jigs and fixturing. Let's kind of go into the plans. These are just some sample pages. This isn't all of them. If I were to print all of them, it would be a freaking book. But anyways, this is kind of just what to expect. As I said before, you can kind of see this actually, this drawing on my website, decentmfg.com. I'll put a link in the uh, description. But this is just to let you know what you can fit in the machine, what it can accommodate from an axle standpoint. Because like I said, this is designed for primitive construction areas, like myself, under the lean-to. Really, angle grinder, simple hand tools, flux core welder, and some simple, whatever it be, a uh, chain hoist, cherry picker, just something to lift heavy objects. But yeah, this is a pretty primitive machine. You don't need a fancy factory floor to build this. Really, the only thing you're going to need to find is uh, just a supplier to cut out the sheet steel. And then also to press break the panels. But the beefiest iron that you're going to be press breaking is going to be 3 16 Which most towns should have a small manufacturer that can do that. Unless you live in like Antarctica or something. Can't help you there though. But yeah, this is kind of what to expect from the plans. I tried to put as much information as I could. Obviously it's you can never get anything 100% foolproof, but I did my best to uh, get to that. But you can kind of see how it's put together. I mean, you can also use the supplemental information like the YouTube videos. But you see right there, you can see the left half of the body. The right half of the lower body. Putting the panels together. And then putting your tube axles. As you can see in this drawing here I actually eliminated or at least deleted the walking beam that you see on the prototype just because of the instability I was getting on grades and to be honest from a suspension standpoint it didn't really help much you're still bouncing along like crazy it's just what it is it's just an economic machine you can't expect it to be an Abrams tank or a or a rip saw or anything like that this is a uh $5,000 build what you see right there all that conglomeration of iron and steel and rubber You can obviously put a lot more money into it, which I might do this winter just to put a cab up So I don't freeze my ass off But I digress Moving on to here. You can kind of see how it's put together putting the tack bars in Tacking up your tube axles putting your drop axles. This is three-quarter inch steel right there, so all got fully gusseted up so I actually calculated you should be able to take about 6G 6G loading so you can almost drop it out of an airplane at least on a parachute air droppable putting your spindles on you know I just it's kind of Ikea ish but that was kind of what I was going for you know simple to understand at least not to mention a little more uh, visually acceptable, three-dimensional, you know. Putting your tires on, putting your axle. This is kind of what I got. I got actually three pages of uh, axle print. This one, this configuration is for a Ford 8.8, Ford 9-inch, and a Toyota 8-inch. Which is just the stock configuration. Now you can add adapter plates, which are in the cut part list. You can kind of see it right there, that number one. It's a little uh, adapter plate. And this changes it to a GM 10, 12, or 14 bolt axle, 
or a Dana 44 axle. And if you're running a smaller axle than that, than the other, than the others, you can run a Ford 7 and a half, Dana 30 and 35 by using that adapter plate. But yeah, everything is configurable, all the dimensions are there, helpful tables to kind of help you along the way in locating everything from an axle gauge standpoint. But yeah, as we continue on, you can just see all the details that I put into this. Uh, I mean, it should be fairly understandable. I know for some, it might be a little over their heads, but this might be a, a good learning opportunity for, say, a high school kid or something like that if you're going to be building something kind of low budgetry. I shouldn't say super low budget, but yeah, you know, all the details. This is kind of like the main weldment assembly print. But yeah, like I said, this is just a basic chassis. So if you put creature comforts in, cabs, stuff like that, you're going to have to do that yourself, unfortunately. This isn't a turnkey solution, and then you got the finished drawing there, so. But yeah, it continues on, the prints and the smaller sub-assemblies and sub-weldments. Here you can see the sprocket wheel. Putting that together. Putting the teeth on, you know. Wrapping the conveyor belt. Putting the teeth on there. Here's the sub-weldment for the idler arm. But yet, like I said, that, I mean, that USB file's got a lot of information in there. And if you're interested, I suppose. It's definitely not a solution for everyone, that's for sure. But if you're looking for kind of like a heavier duty Argo type of vehicle, this might be what you're looking for. I'm not sure. It's up to you. You vote with your wallet, right? This is kind of the track assembly right there. Track well mint details. Here's your track jig. And like I said, all this stuff is CNC cut. So you'll just have to send. I got a whole folder in there with all the CNC files that you got to send off to your uh, steel supplier. And then you just send that and then also the prints for the press breaking operation. They should be good to go. Your track jig. And I also got a cut list too, so you know what to cut and how many to cut. But you can also look at the uh, that master bill materials as well. This is kind of if you're going to be building your own track cleats. Kind of gives you the operation. There's your die, pressing them in, and then obviously the whole dimensions were back there. And kind of a sample page of the uh, steering console. But yeah, I hope that uh, kind of enlightened you on some of the prints there and the information that you'll get. But moving on to say what changed from this prototype that you see here. Compared to the uh, production variant you see here, one of the things that I did, like I said, I deleted the walking beam because of the instability. And plus it wasn't doing me any good anything. Then also, it takes rid of this problem. You can kind of see how these axles are cambered on the front here because the actual walking beam tube is twisting under the weight of the spindle loading. With that three quarter inch drop iron that's all gusted it up, you shouldn't have this problem. You will not have this problem. Another kind of change, I really changed up the body you kind of see those tail fins there. This is for once you put more cargo because if you're going to have a really tall engine, you're going to have a really tall cargo deck too that goes with it. So that gives you another four inches of freeboard there so you can stack cargo up, keep it from shifting and hopefully not falling out into the drink. Another change to help with stability in the water since it sat so high in the water what I did is I dropped this lower tub two inches and then 
I raised subsequently raised this two inches so that way it sit lowers in the water this body sits lower in the water so that way this upper hole will have about two inches of uh, draft there so that will give it a lot more stability in the water you can kind of see right there where that windscreen plate is you can see the tail fin another thing that I did is I move that front axle forward two inches that way it gives it more stability going downhill because this thing was so uh, front heavy without cargo in it when it was unladen it kind of liked to bump out a little bit you know nose down forgot to mention too I got some winter track extensions going down here for the winter time for the snow it's just your typical uh, kind of like a snow cat track extension I got uh, more flotation here so more track width and I also got a space link cleat design to give you more traction in the snow because it's they're spaced that farther apart. So you, when you see that shear area on that snow, you can push a lot more snow without it failing on the snow surface. But yeah, continuing on from the uh, changes from the prototype to the production unit, that's really all I've changed. Everything's been holding up and living really well from an undercarriage standpoint and from a... Uh, chassis standpoint really no big fatigue failures besides the walking beam issue um, but yeah if you're looking for that uh, DIY solution kind of like a heavy-duty Argo you know using junkyard components that's what it's designed to do it's designed to be built in primitive conditions like this primitive facilities primitive tooling and using readily accessible junkyard parts off-the-shelf trailer components Conveyor belting you can get out your hell you can you get that shit free at a rock quarry you know kind of the sky's the limit there but for the most part it's definitely a niche product just because it's not going to be for everyone definitely have to put the time into it not to mention the money you're probably looking at it if you work on it a day every weekend you're looking at a four to five month project just to get to this point you know and then not to mention financially. You're looking at investing five grand, sixty five hundred, up to sixty five hundred dollars just to get to this point too. I mean obviously after that, the sky's the limit. You can go hard top cab, soft top cab, you name it. So definitely not for everyone, but for some it might be what they're looking for. I hope this video was informative. Give you a better idea of what to expect if you do go about ordering something like this. Just want to let you know what you're getting into, but then again, you also got all those supplemental videos too that you can see on the YouTube, how it was put together, which I hope was uh, helpful there. So, yep, I hope to get a soft top cab on this baby in the next couple of months because I want to take it up to the UP, so that'd be kind of fun. Hopefully it'll keep it nice and toasty warm. Yeah, wish me luck.